This is the Getsy Health Podcast with Janique and Tristan Roney. Welcome back to the Getsy Health Podcast. Hi, everybody. We have, okay, Tristan's back, by the way. Welcome Hi. back. <laughs> I'm still alive. He's, he's still alive. <laughs> he hasn't been on the podcast for a while. I don't so. know what's going on. I keep disappearing, but that's but, just how it's been. But you guys, we have another really incredible guest. Mm-hmm. It's Dr. Eric Z, and I am pretty sure a lot of you guys have heard of him. So Dr. Z, thank you so, so much for coming on our podcast. We are super stoked to have you. This is really exciting for us. And I'm sorry, we'll let you talk in a second. <laughs> but um, when we when we first started getting into essential oils, Janique and I personally, her mom had been doing it for a long, 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 long time, but we were just brand new to it. We knew nothing. And so we got online and we just started researching everything we could. And we came across this, this guy, Dr. Eric Z. And um, he was a genius. Like all of these things he was putting out were like, holy cow. Yeah. We just absolutely loved it because it was accessible. Mm -hmm. It was, it was not trying to push us towards a specific essential oil brand or a downline or anything like that. And it was just so full of helpful information. Mm -hmm. And so when we were um, approached not too long ago with the opportunity to have him on the show, we were so excited to say yes. And now here he is. Everyone I hope you are as excited as we are. This is Dr. <laughs> Eric Zielinski. Is, am I saying that right, Zielinski? Yes, and that you know what? That's the funny story about why I'm, I ask people. I just say, just call me Dr. Z. I mean, just so many people have looked at And ever since I've been a kid, ever since, mm-hmm. and my poor wife, she went from Frawley to Zielinski, and it was just a learning curve for her and for others. So I'm just like, just call me Dr. Z. Call her Mama Z. Oh, and people it. think like, oh, who are you? Well, like, okay, try try my name and see what happens. <laughs> but um, thank you so much. I mean, this it's just a wonderful opportunity to talk. You know, we, we're celebrating the birth of our fifth baby. Oh, congratulations. Right and so I have some wonderful daddy, you know, bags in my <laughs> eyes with the baby this morning. Um, it's just a great time to be alive. And, you know, it's a great time to have the tools that we have available, regardless of what's happening around us. And, mm-hmm. and I, you know, the thing that I keep on going back to, and, and, and I love communicating with our online community via social media and via our newsletter and things. And I'm like, you know, this, this weekend's newsletter is all about the, the craziness of what's happening right now. And I'm like, you know, it might seem like there's not a lot of control that you have, but you really do. And at the very end of the day, mm-hmm. uh, having something like your own little special mood boosting blend inhaler or putting on a special something that chills you out mm-hmm. in the diffuser or whatever it is, having that or having that ability mm-hmm. is so priceless because people are walking, especially in the wake of the US election, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. People feel like everything's out of my control. Right. Right. Everything is out of my control. And 2020 is the year where everyone lost. They felt they lost control. But 2020 was the year where my family and I really just hunker down and and continue doing the things that we've been doing. And and I just only by the grace of God have we gone through this year relatively unscathed. And yeah, we've, we've been inconvenienced and we've been affected and we've been we can talk if you want to. However, we want to talk about 2020. Mm-hmm. But imagine you do have those little tools in your tool belt. Yeah. And that's the power, the healing power mm-hmm. of essential oils, mm-hmm. whether it heals your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit, yes. you have something. Yeah. And so anyway, I don't want to go on philosophical, but but I just want to encourage people because a lot of people just feel victimized mm-hmm. and especially by their circumstances right now. But you know what? All I need is a little, a little bottle, <laughs> a little sprayer, and mm-hmm. at least I could give myself a few moments of respite. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I love that. I want to add to that because the other night I just wasn't feeling good and all I needed was tea tree and I looked all over the house uh-huh. for my tea tree and I couldn't find it. And it was the middle of the night. And I'm like, I cannot go to the store and get tea tree. And I need tea tree right now. And so I felt so powerless mm-hmm. without my little medicine cabinet with my tea tree. And so, yes, like being able to reach for an essential oil to help us in these times of need, when a child is coughing, when there's an, like an open wound or a cut or something, it can feel very empowering to have these really simple tools at the reach of a hand or an arm or something like that. So, so anyways, thank you. What happened at the beginning of the pandemic? People stormed the stores Mm -hmm. to get what? Toilet paper. I know. (laughs) Stuff, the the necessities, right? And junk food. (laughs) Yeah. And, and a lot of over the counter medicines and a lot of like, oh, I got to stock up on five months worth of baby aspirin and the things that, you know, it was, it was a sociology 
master's thesis, yeah. just going to the store and yeah. seeing, wow, I mean, I, you know, look at this shelf completely mm -hmm. empty. Like I would never would have thought they would have picked that. I mean, there are some really interesting products that people just picked <laughs> up. Yeah. 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 And so the thing was, you know, the reality was beside, we had no need for anything. Mm -hmm. And and that's the cool thing is if you start preparing now mm -hmm. and you start building your medicine cabinet, you start preparing your pantries, you start preparing your gardens and, and all the little things, your body care, even though everyone was storming the shelves to get hand sanitizer and soap, right. we had the basic ingredients like Castile soap and we had the things that we needed to make our own mm -hmm. and if we needed to and we did. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty empowering when you think of it, because when they're literally sold out of the things that you want to use, even dish soap, I mean, laundry soap, what are you mm -hmm. going to do? Yeah. So even the little things, having at your disposal, it kind of brings us back to what was life like 200 years ago right. when you were so yes. self-sustaining, yes. had to grow yes. your own food, make everything, barter. Mm -hmm. And it, it gave people a little bit of an, you know, just like a little titch of like, hey, this is what life was like yeah. and you you can do it yes. and even though you can't do everything well together i believe we can mm -hmm. right even though you can't do it alone Right. And that's the thing a lot of folks are afraid of. Maybe you're really good at DIY stuff or maybe someone else is really good at food. Well, we'll trade. Mm, I mean, yes. people use yes. to do, right? Exactly. Why not? I mean, whatever happened to that? I like, love so much that you said that because, and, and people must think that we plan this out, but almost every single episode, mm -hmm. we come back to this same concept, which is if we can get back to what our ancestors did, yes. we yeah. can solve almost all of the problems of modern society mm -hmm. because it worked so well until we started messing with it and interfering with it and becoming dependent on a system that is not sustainable. And what you're talking about is getting back to that sustainability and that, that self-empowerment. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. I love that this came up. I know. And I love like homesteading is such a big thing these days where everything is yes. like DIY. Everything is grow your own, get your own animals. And I'm like, I want a cow now. I want a goat. Uh -huh. Like I want to grow my own food everywhere and, you know, and, and make my own products and my own face lotions. What we do. And <laughs> you know, it's so simple. And yet we, we have complicated the heck out of everything. I mean, you buy a body lotion and you can't even read half of the ingredients and really all you need is some oil and I don't know how Cecilia makes the lotions, but some <laughs> oil and essential oils and she creates, puts heat in it and makes a cream and it's amazing and it works yeah. beautifully. Right. And so, so anyways, back to the basics, you guys, we love it. Dr. Z, can I ask you how you got into essential oils? What's your story? Yeah. You know, a lot of it is the, the context of our conversation, what really took me over the edge because, and I'll say there was an edge. My wife's been using oils since she's been a teenager. She had a she had a chemical burn when she was 14 mm -hmm. wow. and she used some off the wall, you know, whatever generic brand of facial cleaner when she was a girl mm -hmm. and she was on vacation in Minnesota and her family had well water at the time. So something with the well water, the chemicals that her grandparents used to clean the well water and mm. the soap that she used from the bottom of her nose to really essentially near the, her upper um, neck, yeah. two, three layers of skin mm. burned off. Oh, wow. And wow. so her mother's friend is a Jibwa Indian and practices a Jibwa medicine or Cherokee and she practices a Jibwa medicine. Oh, and she gave my wife so her cool. first essential oil kit and said, hey, you got to use this mixture of lavender and some coconut oil and jojoba. Nothing, Nothing worked. There. Medicines didn't work over the counter stuff. So that was my wife at 14. So when I met her, you know, she's beautiful. She smelled great all the time. <laughs> and that was her thing. And when, when we married and I saw her little routine, I was mm -hmm. like, wow, that's a lot. And that's a lot of smell. And that's cool for you. But for me, I'm going to do my thing, mm -hmm. which really for all intents and purposes had nothing to do with essential oils because my own healing story had to do a lot with faith, with nutrition, mind, body. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really introduced to essential oils essentially until I uh, met her. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I dabbled, you know, and I, I joke, but I, it's not like I'm going to go play beach volleyball with my guy friend smelling like Ylang Lang. I'm going yeah. to go, go take my guy card away, right? <laughs> but, but funny enough, when I was at church a couple weeks ago, the, the worship pastor came up to me. I gave him a big hug after church. He goes, man, you smell good. <laughs> I'm like, I get more compliments from dudes how I smell than women because they recognize, wow, that's not that 
uh -huh. toxic chemical mm -hmm. cologne than I used yeah. to know, right? Totally. So anyway, fast forward to when I was a medical researcher and I was just at the point where I was in school and I was just making ends meet and I had a, I was taking a lot of different jobs, writing medical papers, getting published and doing white papers and all kinds of stuff. And I learned a lot. One of my clients at the time commissioned me to write a series of public health reports on essential oils. Mm -hmm. So now it was my job and it was a fascinating experience to read hundreds of studies about wow. the anti-inflammatory effects of essential oils mm -hmm. and, and how essential oils could possibly even help a cancer patient and diabetes, blood glucose, blood pressure and all these different things. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this is wild. Yeah. And then I had my own proverbial coming to Jesus moment because I was looking at my medicine cabinet and I realized, you know, I don't have things for X, Y, Z, right? Yeah. Like yep. a pimple, athlete's foot, infection, some kind of histamine response. What yeah. do I got? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at the point where I was, I had nothing because I was at that point very extreme where I, I didn't take any medicine, like period. And I still don't because I don't use essential oils, but I just <laughs> grinned and bared it. Uh -huh. I just grinned and bared it. Like if I couldn't figure something out, I would just suffer through the symptoms because I, I knew in my head that the medicines were dangerous enough mm -hmm. where I didn't want to use them. Yeah. But I also didn't have a solution to that. So that was my own, again, young 20s, kind of like having to figure this out kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's when I started dabbling with essential oils and one by one. And it really was when we had our first baby, Esther, and now she's 12. But when I saw my wife put diluted, heavily diluted orange and peppermint on my daughter when she had 104 temperature oh. and saw that just almost immediately resolve it. Amazing. I was like, wow, this is no joke. Yeah. Right. And 104 is no joke. Most people mm -hmm. will take the kid to the hospital right. at 104, which by the way, I'll leave that up to parents, but we never take our children to the hospital for a fever, um, especially 104, because it's easily managed in our family. Mm -hmm. And so that was it. I was like, okay. And I started learning. And Amazing. so here we are today. I mean, like what got me to the point where I am doing what I'm doing now is another story, but I feel like everyone has their own, what got you interested in natural health? What got you interested in oils? What revelation did you have to experience? Mm -hmm. I was always bent. I was always ready. Mm -hmm. It was just a matter of being introduced in the right way. I love it. That's really cool. And I love that your wife was your teacher. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. She really showed that to you. You know, I, I feel like it's really hard for women to convince our husbands that these things are actually really legit. And there is research behind it yeah. and they are very potent. So that's, that's so, so cool and shows the love and respect that you have for her. So thank you. Really awesome. Can you tell us a little bit more about your online presence, the resources that like, how did you come about doing that and how can people find your information and what are you putting out there for people? Because you have a lot, like there is so much information out there. You have courses, you have free information, you have like paid subscriptions. Can you give us a little bit of a breakdown on all of that information for our listeners? Yeah. And you know, it goes back to Sabrina. It goes back to my wife. I mean, I, I invested a ton of time and energy and money into being a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. And when I was in school, that was the dream of opening up a chiropractic health center mm -hmm. where we would have this like midwife, home birth group and homeschool group, being a, like a healthy community, helping people with the nutrition. Like I had this holistic, my wife and I had this vision, Abundant Life Health and Wellness Center, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I was in school, I realized that I had a gift and I didn't recognize that I, I found really research-based writing and I realized that was that that would come so easy to me yeah. so I took up a couple scholarships I took up a couple of grants just to help literally make the ends meet because we were I was a baroque I was on food stamps mm -hmm. thank God we had that meta or that government assistance at the time with mm -hmm. a little baby and then two on the way yeah. so you know imagine I was in my young 30s at the time just kind of struggling through life, just figuring out what it is. And I, I graduated through school, quite frankly, on a research track. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. I went to Emory University. I studied public health at the master's level. I just fell in love with this. And, mm -hmm. and this whole chiropractic thing just kind of like fell by the wayside, quite frankly. Like I've never practiced mm -hmm. chiropractic. I, I've been, I have a research essentially mm -hmm. a research clinic online. Yeah. And so when I graduated, I went to, right, it was right before I graduated, I was like, Sabrina, what do you think we should do? And she's like, well, we, we got to put our stuff, I want to put my stuff online. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I have no idea what that looks like. Yeah. And I remember I had 1500 bucks. I was broke. 
Mm-hmm. And one of my clients, and I'm like, hey, you know, I got a little bit of money because I just had a, like a, a research job. And, and I went to one of my clients, I'm like, hey, do you have a recommendation of someone? And I found a wonderful woman that still works for me today. That's awesome. That built an entire website for me wow. on Amazing. the cheap because she appreciated us and she knew us and she knew of our work. And we had a mutual friend through my client. And it all started in 2014. And it was just essentially, it was, it was at the time, it was my curriculum vitae. It was where I wanted to show people like, hey, I could write here some articles. And, and if you want to mm-hmm. hire me, um, here's my stuff. And then my wife's like, well, can I put up some of my recipes? And Amazing. she kind of took over. Uh-huh. Yeah, she kind of took over. <laughs> I and love it. Yeah, again, I get... I give my wife a lot of credit because um, my wife's name, you know, my first book here, my wife's name isn't on the book. Mm -hmm. And that was an actual point of contention at first because a lot of my wife's recipes, especially the labor and delivery, Mm it's like all of it's her. Mm -hmm. Um, But I will tell you, the pushback I got from the publishers were, well, who's your wife? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, your wife's not a doctor. Yeah. And your wife has no letters behind her name. Your wife, your wife isn't the face of the business. Yeah. And I didn't realize that I needed to like to shift something. And maybe I'm speaking to someone right now. Maybe I'm speaking to a guy out there or a woman or whoever it is. But there's an aspect of, you know, to me, the real true healers and the experts out there are the moms who take care of the babies. Thank you for saying long. that. <laughs> yes. And a friend of mine, Joette Calabrese, and you guys got to get her on your podcast. She's a spitfire Sicilian homeopath who said the reason we're in the state we are is because mom, and I got this on tape because mm-hmm. in my interviews, my summits, uh-huh. the reason we're in the situation we're in, Joette has said, with our health care is because moms have outsourced health to the doctors. Yes. Moms need to take care of the babies. She has four babies. She never took them to the pediatrician once. I'm not saying that's what you do, mm-hmm. but that's what now Jouette in her 60s teaches women, moms around it. the world. Wow. And so I've just really been empowered and how disempowered I am as a man because for me, it's not my nature to do these mm-hmm. things. I'm not the nurturer or the carer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So all that to say is I realized, you know, I remember, there's so much here. I don't want to ramble on, but my no. first website no. was doctor. It was drericz.com because mm-hmm. I couldn't afford Dr. Z. They were going to charge me $100,000, <laughs> no joke. Ooh. And they're still trying to sell oh it to God. me. <laughs> I couldn't afford drz.com <laughs> and Dr. Zelinsky was taken. I'm like, well, let's do Dr. Eric Z. Mm-hmm. And so I remember three years ago when I told my wife, I'm changing, or two years ago, I said, I'm changing the website name. She goes, no. I mean, she goes, this is our brand. This is our website. Mm-hmm. I go, no, you're not in it. Mm-hmm. I go, it has to be something where you can be included. So now that's why we changed it to Natural Living Family. Because a big part of what I do is because of my wife. Yeah. And that's why when I got my second book offer, I told my agent, kind of tongue in cheek, I'm like, don't even think about, in in a nice way, he's a friend. I'm like, Mm -hmm. don't even give me a contract without Sabrina's name on it this time. She has to be on it. And so that was my little battle and fight to recognize, you know, it doesn't matter if you don't have any letters behind your name. You don't have to be a published researcher to know what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, you know, let's empower the people that actually do this work practically. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm in my research office here. My wife's the one who's really doing it and formulating a lot of the things. Mm-hmm. And I think quite frankly, that's one of the reasons why our work has become so popular mm-hmm. is because you got my wife's practical aspect of everything yeah. and she's doing like all these things and she's making them just for our family. Mm -hmm. And I can prove a lot of it based off of the research. And I say, Hey, here's some things you got to think of. What can we do with this little formulation? And Hey, here's what the research says to us. It's kind of this wonderful, I never thought it when I met her aspect that Mm -hmm. we have this family based home business that it's a ministry that, you know, I was a banker when I met her, she was in sales when I met her and we were young kids and we had no idea what we were doing, not realizing that here we would be. So long answer to a short question, but there's so much that I've learned over the years and to honor mothers, to honor my wife and, and to truly, because again, against her wishes, I did this. And now she appreciates it. She goes, no, no, I don't want that. I'm like, no, it's not about you getting glory. It's not about you. I mean, let's give credit where credit's due, but let's also yeah. empower moms. Yes. And that's what I got to say. Yes. The, my most favorite thing about the multi-level marketing industry, and let's give them a thumbs up on yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. They've empowered mothers women. Mm-hmm. and they use that word. They've empowered mothers yes. and women to regain control of their health care. Yes. And that is something I've seen firsthand and I appreciate. 
Yes. Now it's just a matter of, okay, let's do it safely and effectively. I have so many goosebumps because that's yeah. all we preach about all day, every day is you are entitled to knowledge about your body, like educate yourself so that you can hold a really strong conversation with your doctors. And if your doctors are gaslighting you, you fire them and you find a doctor that will advocate for you. Yep. But we yep. have like us as women in the homes, we have to be the advocates for ourselves, mm -hmm. for our children, for our babies, because no one is going to do it for us doctors are burnt out in the medical system. They don't have the mental or emotional bandwidth to do it for us. So we have to do that. We have to use tools like essential oils, food, herbs, supplements to do it for ourselves and to really know the nitty gritty about the, the physiology that's happening in our bodies, right? Which is what the platform is about. The podcast is about, the Instagram is about is, Hey, let's break down these really complex. And I put in air quotes, these complex systems, and let's explain it to you so that you can understand it and grasp it and talk about it with your doctors right okay. so thank you for like bringing your wife on board yes. you know bringing her to the forefront and saying hey you know what she isn't a doctor so and so and she's a freaking genius because we don't need letters behind our names to step into our power we don't need that and and you say you're not sure who you're talking to you are talking to so many people right now yeah because our audience is made up of these Primarily women, women. Mm -hmm. stay at home moms. been told their whole lives that they have nothing to offer yeah. because mm -hmm. they don't have the education, they don't have the professional background, they don't have the experience, and their personal experience is telling them exactly what they need to do. They mm -hmm. have this beautiful intuition yes. that, that says, "Oh, I can do this," and then they have this external world that says, "No, you can't." Mm -hmm. And we have been trying for so long to tell them, "Yes, you can. You have exactly what you need." Yeah. And hearing it from another person right now is probably just so empowering for them. And exactly. so thank you. Thank you so much for bringing that conversation topic up. Exactly. So and what is your website again? It's it's family, natural, natural living family na natural living family .com, you guys. So there's tons of resources there. You spoke about the healing power of essential oils. That was your first book. you yeah. how many books do you have now? Just the two or are there three? We have two and a third is being published okay. um, at the, it'll be September of 2021 at this point. We're, okay. we're in the final stages of the manuscript awesome. editing process, which is fun. Yeah. Amazing. So tell us about your second book. Yeah, it's called the essential oils diet. Right. And that is essentially, it's our life. Mm -hmm. It's our lifestyle. It could have very well have been called and it should have been called, I think the essential oils lifestyle. lifestyle. Yeah, but but I lost the title wars to, to my publisher. By okay. the way, for those people who are like, should I publish or should I self publish? Listen, Self-publishing gives you freedom. Yes. <laughs> Publishing with a publisher. I love my publisher. Opens up a lot of cool doors, you know, mm. gets your book in the Whole Foods or maybe Costco. But mm -hmm. so anyway, it's the essential oils lifestyle. It's how we live. We've been asked now, you know, we've been doing this professionally online um, in front of millions of people every year with our websites and social media, our documentaries and things. Um, millions of people millions and have asked us not millions have asked us but feelings of the millions that follow yeah. thousands literally yeah. have asked us like what do you do for this how do you live for that and mm -hmm. and what do you do when it comes to food and kids and and travel right how do you do what yeah. you do when you go to disney world which mm -hmm. we do and <laughs> so all these things happen and like you know what let's just put our healthy lifestyle which at the core is essential oils because again yeah. we can't do what we do without diy yeah. mm -hmm. doing it ourselves right mm -hmm. so at the core of what we do is essential oils. So it's really a healthy transformation book that my wife, who is a 2019 winner of Mrs. Georgia, mm -hmm. so she transformed her body from normal, good looking mom body to like <laughs> ultimate super fit pageant body. Amazing. And people like want to know how do you do that? Yeah. And how do you do it naturally? Because she doesn't have stretch marks. She just had her fifth baby Amazing. naturally, right? And yeah. we do all these things at home. And people are like, well, what does that look like for me? Yeah. And so that's really what the book is. It's fun. It's a challenging, it's a challenge. And I'll sum it up with this. If you give us 60 days, mm -hmm. your life will be transformed. And why 60? Because there's something most people don't realize. Researchers have shown it takes up to 66 days to develop a habit. Oh, wow. And that's that's beyond proven this whole two three week thing no yeah. it, it can take a year for some it could take two minutes for others mm -hmm. but on the whole and on an average if you want to develop new lifestyle habits mm -hmm. you got to give yourself a solid two months yeah 
And that also that makes, makes a lot of sense. You want to go through two cycles of life. Women understand the cycles of life, but men don't realize too that our skin regenerates every 28 days. Mm -hmm. and our bodies are truly on a monthly cycle. Yeah. If you okay. could go through two cycles of life, essentially, and if you do something consistently, you'll find your taste buds change. You'll mm -hmm. find that your physiology reacts in a certain way yeah. repeatedly. You'll find that your thoughts are different. Mm -hmm. And there are certain things you need to do to get ready for that. So yeah. we talk about everything from emotional detoxification to how to incorporate essential oils like lime and lemon to help stimulate lipolysis, which mm -hmm. is fat breakdown, mm -hmm. which my wife will tell you has been a big part of her trimming up in some problem areas around the, you know, the underarms or thighs or the tummy, whatever it might mm -hmm. be. Essential oils are great when it comes to giving you that competitive edge to taking your health to that next level. I love it. And then your third book is coming out next year, September, correct? Yes. Awesome. The Essential Oils Apothecary. And essentially Ooh. this is part three. Like the first book, Healing Power of Essential Oils is the beginning prepper book. It's, it's like, look, this is everything you know to get started. I have a special section on women's health because mm -hmm. like you've mentioned, most of your listeners, most of my followers are women. Mm -hmm. So I have a whole section on libido and menopause and autoimmunity and labor delivery, like all this stuff. That's the healing power of essential oils. But if you want to focus on your lifestyle, that's the essential oils diet. But what about people that are sick? Yeah. And I, I was really grappling about what the right, like, you know, it's not like I can write a hundred books on essential oils. Like there, there's a, there, there's a limit here, mm -hmm. right? There's a limit of topics and there's also a limit of research. Yeah. And so I, it hit me like, you know what the biggest bang for a buck right now is to help people mm -hmm. is to focus on the major causes of death Yeah. is to focus on chronic disease. Yeah. And we start with obesity, diabetes, cancer. We talk about Alzheimer's, fatty liver, okay. bone and joint disorders. Most people don't realize how many people die on the adverse effects of osteoporosis yeah. and right. Um, rheumatoid arthritis because of falls. Yep. Falls are a leading cause of death. How do you fall? Well, when you get older, because your bones and your joints, right? So all these little, you know, the elbow is connected to the hand bone kind of mentality. It's like, let's connect it all together. Yes. And so with the basic knowledge of oils that we give people, this is literal step-by-step -step protocols according to the research of what people need to consider mm -hmm. under the guidance of a healthcare professional to how to prevent and treat chronic disease. And so I'm really excited about that one. And especially in the context of what we're dealing with in 2020, chronic disease has been an underpinning of a lot of stuff. People don't realize, you know, like what yeah. makes people more at risk of dying of a XYZ is because of, you know, mm -hmm. obesity and yes. diabetes, heart disease keeps on coming up. Oh, yeah. And so what if we start to like shift that pandemic, that which is a real pandemic yes. around yes. the world. And not saying essential oils are the cure-all, mm. but it I believe they should be a critical part of your natural living protocol. Absolutely. In, you know, so I got a saying that keeps on coming to me whenever I write a book and, you know, there's this, this mentality that people can use an oil for that, right? And that's where on the flip end of the multi-level marketing industry, it's like, okay, guys, <laughs> it's not that easy. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if someone's going to use essential oils but live their fast food or American mm -hmm. lifestyle, it literally is like taking one step forward and two steps back. Yes, yeah. agreed. You have to live this holistic life. Mm -hmm. It's it's your your food. It's your it's your motion, your movement, your exercise. It's how you manage stress. It's your yeah. social engagements, yes. right? And the lack, therefore, lack of that people are struggling with. Mm -hmm. How many people are, are at the knife edge right now of depression totally. and suicide? Yep. I mean, we personally, we personally have been affected by this, our friends and family, because of the lack of support that yep. people are getting right now. Yep. Mental illness and so if, insane. you know, if you're isolating yourself or if you're forced in isolation for weeks or months on end, yep. No orange oil is going to cure that. Right. Exactly. I mean, you know what I mean? It, no, it might sound crazy, but it's like we have the tools that we have available to us, but it, yep. it's like building blocks on top of each other yep. to build this building of health. And so I just want to reinforce that importance to, you know, we need to adopt this healthy lifestyle because that's the key. Yep. And the people that I know. And my mentor, Enoch, for example, who's 77 years old on no medication, can still run circles around me, bench mm -hmm. press more than I can. We just went on a you know, <laughs> several mile hike. I mean, his lifestyle mm -hmm. is one that mm -hmm. empowers him really yes. and supports his body to do things in a proper way. Exactly. 
So I, I want to leave that thought with people because that's really as I finished that you know I finished the manuscript a few weeks ago. We're now editing it. That's really the underpinnings. Yes. And I have this little disclaimer on every single chapter. My editor is like, "Well, do we need to have this in every chapter?" I'm like, "I think we do." It's like, it's like, hey, stop. Before mm-hmm. you go and find out the 10 oils to use for Alzheimer's, yeah. before you look at the 15 oils to use for insomnia, mm-hmm. please go to the appendix and look at the healthy living strategies we recommend. I love because it. Because you might want to think about CBD. Yes. You might want to think about meditation or therapy. You might want to think about these things because if you don't, you might be disappointed. Exactly. And I'll leave people with that. The most disenfranchised people I get from essential oils are the ones that are really toxic and unhealthy. Yeah. The folks that don't get the results that they're looking for, yeah. their toxic burden and overload, it's like nothing will work from. These are the same people that need five doses of Vicodin to mm-hmm. get a similar reaction as one person gets one. They've developed resistance. Mm-hmm. Their body is in such a state of toxicity and I would even say numbness that it's hard to even produce a physiological response. Right, exactly. I don't know any healthy person on the planet that if you give them peppermint, that they won't automatically like kind of jump up and perk up. It, yeah. like, mm-hmm. It's a physiological right. fact that it will open up the airways. It'll give you a little mental boost. Totally. You might not like it. I don't know. But the thing is, is that I remember when I taught one of my first classes and this um, chronically ill man, I mean, he was morbidly obese. And unfortunately, he, he later... I found out he later died um, shortly thereafter, morbidly obese. He smelled the peppermint. And I remember he's like, I don't feel anything. Mm-hmm. Like, and I remember how cynical he was. Like he goes, this stuff is hocus pocus. Right. And it dawned on me. I'm like, what would create a response on this person? Right. And then I started working with him. I'm like, you know, you got to lose a little weight here and let's mm-hmm. start moving a little bit. And then it, it just, it more and more developed. If you want your body to truly respond to things, mm-hmm. your body has to be in a good place to do it. Otherwise, your body's going to be protecting against everything. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, anyway, all that to say is we cannot push enough and support enough, especially today, especially today in 2020 and now 2021, depending on when you listen to this or beyond, mm-hmm. the criticalness, the critical nature of, looking at your whole life. Yes. And then what we do, what you do is like, okay, let me show you how to use oils for this and mm-hmm. maybe show you how to use oils for that. And right. yes, oils can help you exercise better. They could help your libido. They could help your mood or they could help your hunger cravings. They could help whatever. Mm-hmm. But imagine you look at this completely holistically. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm going to say this again, all my listeners who have listened to all of our podcast episodes, I'm sorry if you're hearing this for the third time, but I'm not. Car- Car- <laughs> Carlin call, who is just ingredients online. She shared this analogy and I love taking it further. She says, you know, if you have a house or a house that's on fire, you're not just going to throw one hose on that. You're going to do 10, you know, so one hose is essential oils. One hose is exercise. One hose is meditation. Three hoses is nutrition, right? And so when we have our people that their their complete house is just burning and they think it's that one hose that's going to fix them, it's not. Because are you also throwing gasoline on the back of that fire as well? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That's the fast food. That's the inflammatory oils. That's the sugar. That's all of that. And then you sniff a peppermint and you're like, that's not working. And it's like, well, you have one hose coming in on one side and then you have like 10 gallons of gasoline coming on the back of the fire. Of course, you're not going to get a net positive in this situation. And so I really love Dr. Z that you're acknowledging that, you know, essential oils are not just the only tool in your belt. Mm-hmm. You got to acknowledge and appreciate and keep utilizing all of the tools, all of the hoses to put out that fire. Because when that fire is just really small, it's just in like a a bedroom or something. When you sniff that peppermint essential oil, it's going to go out because you only need one hose, right? But again, like big fire versus little fires, right? 10 hoses versus one hose. It's, it takes energy and it takes time to get all of those fires to go out. And so, um, so thank you for sharing that. that You said it takes time. Mm -hmm. It does take time. It takes time. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a big difference between giving birth and having an epidural that's immediate and that's profound versus something like clary sage that my wife would use or hot compresses with, you know, certain herbs that, that Mm -hmm. are more gradual. Right. And that's the other thing is like, I don't get an immediate response. I don't Mm -hmm. like this stuff. And it's the same, it's the same argument that doctors get when it comes to antibiotics. And that's why they invented opioids. Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, it's like, okay, let's give you something that you can experience now. It's, it's a matter of trusting the process and giving your body time to adapt. Totally. But you know, there's an element where you do what you do, knowing it's good for you, regardless of the outcome too. Yes. I mean, I think about that. 
do what you do knowing it's good for you regardless of the outcome. Mm -hmm. And that includes having your diffuser kicking in. Yeah. And, you know, Norman Vincent Peale, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, one of my wife's great motivational speakers back in the day, said, you know, you you throw your your heart over the bar and your body will follow. Mm -hmm. Essentially, like, not that you fake it till you make it, but, you know, if you're struggling with mood, like right now, so many people are, just by virtue of knowing that you're doing something good for yourself, yeah. put the happy mood, dopamine, serotonin boosting essential oils, which have been proven to the citrus, for example, the mm-hmm. lime, the bergamot, the lemon, the neroli, the grapefruit, all of them can help. You put them in your diffuser and you just let that run. Just by doing that on a daily basis, on the flip end, instead of a a neurotoxic wallflower or an aerosol that we know will stimulate a sympathetic or inflammatory response Mm -hmm. that can decrease your mood, Mm -hmm. just by doing that, like, you know what? I'm doing something good for myself. Exactly. And repeat to yourself in a sense, like, this is good for me. Like, I don't know about you, but I really don't like the flavor of some of the vegetables that I eat, but I eat them knowing that it's good for me. Exactly. Right? Yes. And and ultimately, I feel good. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, well, you know, let's try to make it taste a little better. But when it comes to the oils, you do it. And again, mood's a perfect example because eventually, I hope, and you will sh- shortly see, wow, I do kind of feel a little bit better mm-hmm. today. Yeah. And next thing you know, you feel what it's like to feel crummy. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, you, you forget what it's like to feel crummy. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. wow, like I, I've been feeling good the last umpteen months what day is it right i didn't realize like (laughs) right and that's when people go to their doctor and they're like well i don't know if i need to be on this annex anymore can we talk about getting off of it Mm -hmm. and that's a special place that i love seeing people go i love that because now they're free Mm mm-hmm and, and I, I'm grateful for medicine to saving lives. I'm grateful for what people, the transition, but to put some on a lifelong sentence that they need to be on any sort of chemical altering pharmaceutical forever yeah. is a state of prison. Totally. It is. It's a state of slavery where it will end up hurting you. It exactly. will end up beating your body down. It will end up causing some sort of other condition. Mm-hmm. And I want to get people off that train. Yeah. Yes. And again, if you're in a state right now, if you're at the point where your life's on a knife edge, like millions are around the world, mm-hmm. do what you got to do to get through today. Totally. But know that this is temporary mm-hmm. and there are strategies that you can implement to exactly. wean yourself off and especially under the guidance of a healthcare professional to get freedom. Yeah. And this I love this because this brings us right back around to where we started, which is that this this roller coaster of a year, 2020, has been an incredible opportunity for those who are willing to see the opportunity. It has forced us to reconsider everything that we do and slow down and basically rebuild our lives from the ground up if we choose to take that opportunity. And those of us who have have seen amazing transformations in our family life, in our community life, in our health. Whereas Mm -hmm. those of us who see only the despair find ourselves falling deeper and deeper into that blackness and our health kind of following in tow with that. So, so here we are now toward the end of 2020, maybe just in the middle of this chaos, who knows, but we still have this opportunity where we can say, okay, it is now time for me to reevaluate what I'm doing on a day-to-day basis and are the things that I'm doing contributing toward my future well-being and happiness Mm -hmm. or are the things that I'm doing contributing to my future despair, depression, unhealth, and eventual demise. And personally, I'm very grateful for that opportunity. I, I have... It's been a rough year for all of us, but, (laughs) but I would not take it back for anything because it has taken us to such an incredible place Mm -hmm. in every area of our lives. Right. Exactly. Here's an action item for people is, you know, regardless of where someone is with their socio-political viewpoints, we don't know what's going to happen in the, in the upcoming weeks. Right. We have no idea. We could see. You know, again, I don't, I don't want to date this too much, but I mean, we're in the midst of England just locking down again. Mm-hmm. Um, El Paso, Texas doing curfews. New York just announced, hey, you have to prove that you're COVID negative to even travel to our state now. Yeah. Wow. Like all these little things. Here's my challenge that I've given myself. I believe God gave me that I wanted to give to the world. If I would have known in January 
that this was going to happen in March, what would I have done differently yeah. in January and February to prepare emotionally, mentally, spiritually, mm. and obviously physically, you know, I would have probably got an extra box of um, paper towel <laughs> yeah. for the paper, right? A bidet. But, <laughs> so what, because the reality is we don't know. Mm -hmm. And again, we're literally right now on this call waiting on the, the election results that yeah. might wait weeks or months. We have no idea at this yeah. point too, right? Mm -hmm. Regardless of what happens to us, we're not a victim of our circumstances. What do you need to do today? Again, that's my question to you and me and everyone. What would you have done differently to prepare yourself so that when lockdowns and quarantine, all this craziness happened, you would have been in a better situation to thrive, right. not just survive by the skin of your teeth. Right. Mm. And for me, it was little things like, you know what? I really miss going to the gym. Mm-hmm. So I bought some extra workout equipment. Well, that was tough at first because all of workout equipment was gone, like yeah. gone mm -hmm. for months. You couldn't even buy a dumbbell right. anywhere, mm -hmm. right? Now that the manufacturers, like we had this like little reset button here, people can still get stuff. Well, it was really tough for us having four kids. We have like homeschool four kids now mm -hmm. or virtual school. Yep. Um, I had to buy an extra laptop. Well, we don't have enough devices for four kids, like little yeah. practical things like that. Yep. But what if we go back to what things like were in March, just on the very practical level, does that mean that you maybe start to prep some of your own do-it-yourself hand soap yeah. or um, at least get the raw materials or at least start to learn? Yeah. Or is this that time when like, you know what, I really wanted to do this or I need to prep for this or X, Y, Z mentality. Mm -hmm. I just found that this has really helped put me in the driver's seat where I'm not now in coach at the, you know, <laughs> yeah. in the back of coach mm -hmm. stuck between two people. I don't want to be stuck with on an airplane yeah. at the mercy of the pilot during turbulence. I don't know. I've been in those bad situations. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was tough. Right. You're not that person. Yeah. You can be in first class, yeah. right? Emotionally, yes. mentally, spiritually, you can be taken care of in your own way. And so that's my challenge to people. And again, in the context of this, the healing power of essential oils, in the context of, of the things that we've done with our books, mm -hmm. I would encourage people, I really would, like, like mm -hmm. pick up a book on essential oils that teach you how to use them or make yes. recipes and start to prepare, start to get your medicine cabinet ready, start to experiment, start to do those little things. Like if it's canning, learn how to can, yep. can some fruits and veggies. If it's like, you know what, I really wanted to do something because I found myself really at, at odds. It's like I was just sitting down all day during March and April. Like maybe you got to get a little garden set up. Yeah, I don't right. care where it is, where you live. You can mm -hmm. garden any time of the year, inside, outside. I mean, really, there's a lot of cool things that you could do. Yep. Hydroponics. Maybe it's, right? Uh -huh. just, just think. Just think about what you want your life to be. And here's to me, what were those things that you were really missing? I guess that's mm -hmm. the inside scoop to who you really are. Yeah. When when we were stuck, and this was, a, again, our virtual coming to Jesus moment for a lot of us, like we had self-realization. What were you really aching for and missing when you literally couldn't leave your home yeah. and when you couldn't buy the things that you wanted? Mm -hmm. That's an indication of, you know, maybe some some weaknesses, right? If you're really missing alcohol, like that's not a good sign. Yeah. Like, man, I, I mean, seriously. Yeah. Like, or what if you were missing something like, yeah, I really just missed those times when I was with my friends. Well, how do you create that environment where you can do those things? Maybe play bridge over Zoom or, yeah. you know, get together with a secret cohort of people that won't rat on each other because mm. that's what we did. <laughs> yeah. Right? We did. Yeah. I just, I'm happens. kidding you. We, mm -hmm. we created our own bubble. Yeah. And nothing we did was illegal, mm -hmm. but everything we did was safe and proper. And I still yeah. played beach volleyball every Sunday during mm -hmm. the whole craziness. Okay. I still maintained our family get togethers in the way that we were safe. Mm -hmm. And I still did my life because I didn't want my kids to live in a way that, you know, would affect them. Yep. Right. And so whatever, again, just, I want you guys to think about it. And some people are being spoken to right now. I'm like, yeah, you know, I really wish I would have had this, or I wish I would have done that. Well, yeah. do that now Yeah. and live now like that yes and prepare so that when something does happen it's a minor inconvenience now totally. and i will tell you the pandemic for us has been a minor inconvenience mm -hmm. it has not other than for some of our friends and family and i will say like very humbly like a, a friend of mine took his life oh, so um, sorry. during this it, it was three weeks ago like wow. that was that was a major thing i mean oh. that was wow um family members losing their jobs. Um, this is big stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, in my own little world, though, I, I personally haven't had that. 
Yeah. And that a minor inconvenience, meaning that, okay, I can't go to the store I want to go to um, or this or that. I can't go to Disney World. Well, okay, no, no, no big deal. Yeah. But I could still create a fun atmosphere with my kids doing things that we can do. Right. So it was, it's been this really great empowering experience for us Mm -hmm. realizing that we were actually much better prepared than I thought we would be for something like this. Yeah. But also now I've been pouring myself into our online community. Like, Hey, do this. Think about that. You know, prep this way. Cause the reality is we're probably going to hit another major lockdown on one way or another. Right. Absolutely. And especially if you're in California, I mean, God bless you. Yeah. I can't imagine. Right. But you could still thrive. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that's the encouragement I want to give people in having, man, I've been really diving into like what, what, what am I using right now? Like cedar wood and spruce and Douglas fir and orange. I've been really diving into like the nature oils more. Mm-hmm. I mean, I call them nature oils, the forest oils. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. uh, I've really been finding myself going outside and forest bathing more and bringing that into my home. Love it. And if you don't know what forest bathing is, look it up. It's fascinating, mm-hmm. right? It's just being outside in nature and just inhaling yes. the VOCs, the volatile organic compounds from the trees and plants. Like mm-hmm. don't exercise, don't do anything, but just be. Yes. And you just feel better. Like you could bring that into your home a little bit. And that's what I'm doing right now. I got a little bit of outside nature in my office as I talk to you. Mm-hmm. Like I've really been drawn to that. You might be drawn because maybe you're super stressed. Maybe you're drawn to ylang lang or lavender or roaming chamomile or maybe a geranium or clary sage that kind of chills you out, gets Mm -hmm. you in that parasympathetic state, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Or maybe you're sluggish and you're just kind of depressed and you need that boost. Well, that's where peppermint or spearmint or some of the invigorating like citrus oils, like I love, I really do. I love orange and spearmint. That's a really cool blend, Mm -hmm. simple. Anyone can just put a drop of each. I mean, all these little things, like the thing, these blends, yes, they do well in the diffuser, but what's your hand sanitizer Mm -hmm. like? What's your dish soap like? What do you put in your hand soap? Like you could buy store-bought hand soap, put a couple drops of essential oils in it, and now you just, boom, Mm -hmm. right? If you get non-toxic store-bought unscented soap, aromify it. Yeah, Yeah. yes. And and you can create your own world. Exactly. Exactly. It, it's not that hard. Yep. It just takes sometimes just picking yourself up by the bootstraps to do it. And and I'll end with this because I'm kind of rambling on. Is no, it's oh, this is awesome. to yeah. realize that you're worth it. Mm-hmm. The self love aspect of this. Mm. Yes. You you deserve it. Yes. And it's not selfish to take care of yourself. And I'm speaking to a lot of moms here and I get it. You're not selfish to take 15, 20 minutes and have your aromatherapy bath or go outside or have a little me time. The weight of the world is on people right now. And, And hopefully you have support. And if you don't, let's pray and let's ask you know, your neighbors or friends to figure out something where maybe you guys can swap. Hey, I just need a half an hour. Can you watch the kids? I'll swap. Yep. With you. I mean, just things. We got to think like what happened to that mentality where grandma went next door to get a cup of sugar. We don't have that mentality anymore. Right. Right. right? And what about the hell? Like, go next door, kick the kids out of the house, play. Mm-hmm. Like yep. mama needs time. I think there's a reason why grandma did that. Yes. <laughs> grandma needed some time alone. Right. Again, I'm speaking to mothers here and fathers, but you deserve it. Mm-hmm. And Again, I don't know of anything else but like essential oils that can put you in an immediate spa place. Mm -hmm. And I love the spa. My wife loves the spa. Who doesn't? Yeah. Yeah, You can do it. Give each other a hand massage. That's another thing I've learned so much. I've talked about my new book. Aromatherapy hand massage is so key. Give your spouse, your lover, your partner a hand massage, a foot rub. Give it to yourself. Like just think about the things that you could do and don't isolate yourself where you don't touch people. Mm-hmm. And I know this is stepping on toes for some people that are like <laughs> social distance Nazis and stuff. You got to put yourself in a situation where you feel comfortable to be around people where you yes. can, you need that touch. Right. You need that touch. And looking at my baby right now and getting he's two weeks old, mm-hmm. I think back to like, you know, experiments, what they did with monkeys back in the day when they mm-hmm. isolated monkeys. Yeah. And this is how, so how sad. much it ruined them emotionally and yes. cra- basically made them crazed. Yeah. We as humans, right? We as people, homo sapiens, we need touch. Yeah, yeah we, we do. need that feel. We mm-hmm. need the hug. We need the hands. We need just that. So find a happy place. Find a, a, a peaceful place and and just realize you're worth it. Yeah. Right? Yes. Just realize you're worth it. I want to add something to that too, because there's a lot of um 
political um, upheaval right now and people are very uncertain and people are very scared. My challenge to people is we still have each other. And I think yeah. that's the relationship we need to repair right now because we are all human beings trying to have an, a, hu a human experience yeah. and we are not each other's enemy. And unfortunately, and I joke about this and I shouldn't joke about it because it's very serious, but 2020 brought out the inner Karen and in everyone, right? And everyone's attacking each other. And now I'm your enemy because I'm not doing things that you think are, are not safe and so on and so forth. And I think we, we have this power to repair these relationships with Yes. ourselves with our neighbors with the person in the grocery store we can do that through posts you know what you you know be the change you want to see in the world mm -hmm. and so instead of um, retweeting negative things tweet positive things post positive things post love emulate love express love you know people keep asking me about my political whatever and I'm like I don't want to talk about that I want to talk about things that unify us mm -hmm. I want to talk about things that uplift you it's not because I don't care about the political stuff it's because I care about the people more you know and so that's where I want my energy to go towards things that are are binding us, uniting us together. And we have a lot of power. I mean, the power that we put towards the fear mongering around COVID, we could turn that power around and put it towards repairing our relationship within our nation, within our country, within our world. We have the power to break down. We've seen that this year. We have the exact same power to turn that around in the opposite direction. So let's start putting momentum in that direction. Let's start loving on each other again, because, you know, there's a saying Tristan has picked up in the past month and he says, I see you, you know? And so I want to say, I see you in your pain. I see you in your fear. I see you in your, your inability to feel comfortable right now. And I still love you regardless. And even though you might be lashing out at me, even though you might be saying hateful things about me, even though you might be thinking I am dangerous to you, I still love you anyways. And, and I would say it's not regardless. It's not still, it's because of those things. Because of those I things. love you mm -hmm. even more because I see myself mm -hmm. in that and I see how much compassion that brings up for me. And it's beautiful. It really is. 100% mm -hmm. of our relationships that we think are difficult are actually just our own walls that we need to get past. Right. And as soon as we put down those walls, those relationships transform. Mm -hmm. And this is supposed to be an essential oil podcast. <laughs> So sorry. Which, we which let's <laughs> let's end on that though. Dr. Z, can you give us one really easy but awesome recipe that you use all the time around the house that or people two. can <laughs> or two that people can take into their lives you know, and implement it, today? It's the holidays, you know, like there's people are gonna be giving gifts and like what are some really great gifts that you think people can put together that not only shares love but creates unity and bonding again? And how can how can we heal each other through essential oils and essential oil gifts? What are your ideas? Well, one thing you just said, it's just so powerful. The underlying fact, now I'll call it a fact, is it's, it's almost impossible to do what you all are suggesting and what I'm suggesting if you don't feel good. Mm, yes. It's really hard. I mean, if you are just at a point where you are just, again, you're living on the knife edge. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you're in pain emotionally, mentally, yeah. physically, whatever to to be of service to others yep. and especially to yourself, to your family. I feel like for me as a Christian, I feel being healthy is my a spiritual act of worship. Yeah. I can't do what I'm called by God to do if this earth suit, this body is weighing me down. Yeah, exactly. And and the better I feel, the more I'm able to pour out. Yep. the more I'm able to give, the more I'm able to be energized. I mean, I wouldn't be able to even have this kind of interview with me, with you all, if, if I were in a situation where I were sick, mm -hmm. right? Emotionally, mentally, spiritually, I, I would barely be getting, a, getting by, yeah. let alone giving. Yeah. yeah. So in the spirit of giving, in the spirit of holidays, you know, for us and Christmas, you know, before you could give the gift of health to others, which I would love for you to do again, go on my website, naturallivingfamily.com or pick up the healing power of essential oils. I mean, there's tons like mm -hmm. you can make a simple hand sanitizer um, bottle cost you two bucks mm -hmm. and, and put a pretty bow on it, put it in a bag with a handwritten card and you just made someone's day. Mm -hmm. Like that's simple, mm -hmm. but to get yourself in the position to even do that though, to give the gift of health, you have to give yourself the gift of health too. Yeah. And so I guess the thing is, is that, you know, a lot of challenges in this conversation, <laughs> but we need 
to take care of ourselves yeah. and do the things that we need to do yeah. so we're in a better position. And moms, dads, caretakers, you're getting the brunt of it. First mm-hmm. responders, you're getting the brunt of it right now. Yeah. Do what you got to do. And I don't know what that looks like, but find what you're drawn to right now. Yeah. And I hope that you have enough essential oils on hand or you could at least let your fingers do the walk in and try to find something. But if you're drawn to something, I want to encourage you to incorporate that into your daily life. Again, Mm -hmm. the citrus oils for mood boosting, I think is a good place to start for a lot of people. It's it's a really good place. Most people don't, you can't go wrong with orange oil, Mm -hmm. for example. And orange oil is not cheap and that's cheap, but it's cost effective. It's typically one of the best all around oils for your buck. And I would say, you know what, get some orange oil. And I'd say, start with that. And and if you can get your hands on some vanilla absolute or vanilla CO2, um, adding a little bit of orange and a little Mm. bit of um, vanilla, it's like the dreamsicle, creamsicle that like people used to have. That smell is my wife's joyful recipe. Mm-hmm. And again, you put equal parts of that, like five drops each and a hand sanitizer, that's all you need. And like per one ounce of liquid, like, you know, and hand sanitizers are simple. I mean, it's yes. really, really simple for people. It's just, it's alcohol. I yeah, mean, right. It's alcohol. <laughs> and you, you don't want to use water. You really don't. You don't want to use water and hand sanitizer. Um, if you want to make it real, like mm-hmm. legit hand sanitizer that kill stuff. Um, it's alcohol and essential oils. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. But if you want to do your body care, you know, one thing I love and I, I, I for me, I'm an on the go, I'm kind of, I'm not a recipe kind of person. That's my wife. Mm-hmm. You know, she's like, follow the book. I, I'm <laughs> Italian. I like to throw <laughs> things together, right? That's my mom's side. My dad's side's Polish. But you know what? Having some jojoba oil or maybe if you're not into the whole aromatherapy movement yet, if you're not in that scene, um, you got. I'm pretty sure you got olive oil at your house. Most mm-hmm. people do, or coconut oil. Mm-hmm. They're great carrier oils, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the more I learn about olive oil, the more I love it. By the yeah. way, it's like mm-hmm. the ancient healing oil for yes. so many things. But getting like the basic ratio is is 12 drops of essential oil mixed with one ounce mm-hmm. of a carrier, and that could be olive or coconut oil. So that's 12. That that's a two percent dilution which is generally recognized as safe for all of your healthcare needs. I mean, yeah. your body, your skin type. Um, mm-hmm. For babies, we cut that in half mm-hmm. and we'll use six drops. Again, six drops for an ounce. That will last you quite a while. Yeah. But if you're on the go and if you need something or if you want to prepare something, you know, getting like one or two ounces and using those ratios I just said, equal drops of orange, equal drops of, of vanilla, if you can get your hands on it, or if you can't, equal drops of orange and equal drops of peppermint. Um, that's a good place to start. And you know what? Try putting that on as a moisturizer after you get out of the shower. Yeah. Um, that's actually what we do with our kids. Mm-hmm. And the kids now at their age, my daughter's 12 and we have now a young one down to four and the baby, but we have our children, like they oil themselves up and it's part of their daily routine. Like we get them out the door and drop them off at school and they're like walking diffusers. Mm-hmm. I love that. And, yes. and the thing I want to encourage you with, the <laughs> practicality of this is, is if you want the biggest effect, I believe the best effect of using essential oils throughout the day, you apply them topically because the oils penetrate into your skin, mm-hmm. get into your bloodstream, you get the healthy effects of that, but you also get the inhalation benefit. Again, you're like a walking diffuser. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So to give the gift of health of others, maybe try in the next month, maybe make November your month where you find the recipe that works for you, whether it's yeah. a, a souffle, butter, kind of like creamy loveliness or whether it's a, in a personal inhaler where you actually buy something like this on Amazon and you have on the go inhalation benefit. Like, I don't know mm-hmm. what works for you, what you like, yeah. but you know what? Find one or two recipes that you love and then make a bunch of them for Christmas and holidays and give them away to people. Yeah. Like imagine that. And this, these are relatively cheap. Yeah. You'll spend a couple bucks on some raw materials. You'll spend a couple hours on some love, you know, mm-hmm. pour your heart into it and you'll have a wonderful, wonderful holiday season of giving not only yourself the gift of health, but giving yeah. it to others. And something so simple is like bath salts, you know, get a bunch yeah. of bath salts, put them in bags, put your favorite essential oil drops in there. That is so easy. And then like 
stick a heart in it or something, you know, and, you know, <laughs> it, it can be so it. easy like that, you know, and so thoughtful and, and so therapeutic too. And then give yourself a bunch of that too and take a ton of baths, right? right. Self-love. So um, well, when you're making it, think of it, right. it's kind of funny, but when you're making, when my wife does her DIY gifts for people, it's like the whole kitchen's like, whoa. I love it. <laughs> yeah. It's like walking into a baker's kitchen with like flour floating oh, everywhere. You're giving so yourself great. a treatment. It's, it's perfect. It's, you do. Oh, I, love I love it. it. Is it fun? What's that? Flip this thing on its head, everyone. Yeah. You and me and everyone, we have the power of flipping this thing on its head. Regardless of the chaos around mm -hmm. us, yeah. we can live in our own center of peace totally. and love and joy. Yes. Totally. And then you become infectious in yes. a good way to everyone around you. And people are going to want to be with you. You're going to want to call you. Like, I can't tell you how many people call me on the phone just to hear me just because I'm so a grounding great. place for them. Mm -hmm. You got this. We can yes. do this. We can do this, oh, you man. guys. I hope everyone has loved this as much as I have. I know, this has right? Just been such a great, loving experience. Thank you, Dr. Z. Thank you, Dr. Z. Oh, thanks for having me. It's been fun. You've been fantastic. Um, so once again, if you want to learn more about what Dr. Z does, all of his awesome ideas, and of course, his wife's awesome ideas, mm -hmm. then naturallivingfamily.com. Did I get that right? Yes. Yes, sir. And um, the, the, the two books that are out right now, both Awesome. If you're brand new to essential oils, then the first book is probably the one you want. It's called, remind mm -hmm. me again, The Healing Power oh, of Essential the Oils. Healing Power of Essential Oils. If you're looking for more of that lifestyle transformation in 66 days, then the second book, The Essential Oil Diet, is going to be the one you want to get. Or just get both of them. I, that's kind of my plan now. I know, right? So. <laughs> well, thank you again for your time. We really appreciate you and your amazing energy that you have shared with us and listeners. Um, and uh, happy holidays, because that's yes, coming up now. Do. And when, yes. whenever you guys listen to this episode, um, probably not holiday time, but happy holidays to you anyways. So <laughs> until next time, you guys, take care. All right, talk to you later. Bye. Bye.